people, I just finished this one and I'm, whoa, <laughs> I mean, I did love uh, Only a Monster, the first book in the series, because I was expecting by the end, I, uh, I wanted, I mean, I was expecting that by the end, I wanted things to be, you know, different. But I was thinking that maybe, probably, um, Vanessa Lynn will end things like having the two main characters together and love triumphing over being a monster and a monster hunter and boy was I wrong and was I happy to be so wrong. I mean, I'm going to be talking about the ending of Only a Monster, which is the previous book, if you haven't read it. Uh, stop seeing the review because I'm going to make a very big spoiler about the ending of the first book. So I did love all the book. I did love how Joan learns that she's a monster and what it means for her and how she reacts to this news about who she really is and what ability she has and how it might affect humanity. And I did love having her fall for Nick this amazing hot guy who seems to be very comprehensive and very nice, but that he's a, a monster hunter and not a regular monster hunter, but the stuff of legends. So I, um, yeah, and Aaron for me, it's like the best character. I love him. I love how I love he is, but truly he's a sweetie pie inside. So yeah, he's an amazing character. So I kind of was expecting the author to blow everything away and have the two main characters, Nick and Joanne, fall in love despite the differences and all of this. So I was completely surprised by the direction that she pulled the book and it was a direction I was rolling for. I wanted them to end up as enemies. They are in different sides of the equation. They might be in love, but you have a monster hunter, a very vicious one. He has been trained all his life to be a monster hunter and who excels in everything he does in the area of killing monsters. And you have a monster on the other side of the equation uh, who is a monster. She may want to change some things because she doesn't agree with them because she has been raised thinking that she's human, but they're like opposites. So... I wanted them to end, as I say, in opposite sides of the story. But what the author did in the story, having Nick kill Joan's family and then having Joan unmade Nick, it was like, I fell in love with the book and the author and everything right at that moment. So when the second book, uh, Never a Hero, came out, I was like, I need to devour it. And I was reading it and I wanted to finish it because I wanted to know how it was all going to pan out. I was thinking it was a duology, so it was very surprising to learn that there's going to be a next book. And this one does not suffer from middle book. It's amazing. In this book, we are going to be uh, following Joanne. He re she remembers everything that happened in the previous timeline. She unmade Nick and somehow she changed the entire timeline even though it's something that shouldn't have happened. So she's kind of coming to terms with a new reality and still grasping at the things that happened in the previous reality or timeline. When she met Nick all over again, she uh, has been seeing him in her new school and she's trying to keep the distance because she still feels things for him uh, because they were like true lovers in their original timeline and once you have a strong connection like this a strong connection like this one you are going to keep bumping into each other the timeline is going to try to bring you together because that's where you belong so she's going to try to resist it resist this pull that she feels towards Nick but she's going to be and she's going to end talking with him and I love all these conflicting feelings that she has because Nick doesn't remember her it's a new Nick. She made the hero. So, so he's kind of this regular guy. And at the same time, she hurts when she, lo she looks at him because it makes her think about her Nick, the original Nick, the one that she knew before in the other timeline, the one that she made, the one that she loved. And this one, this one, she feels attracted to him, but it's not the same person. And I love that the author brings this kind of duality about Nick and about how Joan feels about him. 
And yeah, uh, the sheet it's going to hit the fan pretty soon in the story. Uh, John is going to be ambushed. Uh, there's going to be some very bad monsters that want to kidnap her because uh, they after her for something that she uh, still doesn't know what it's about. Her grandma wants to talk with her about her powers. Um, she wants to run with some members of her family. She's on the run trying to catch up and meet with her family. She doesn't know what's going on. And Nick eats with her. Uh, he kind of helped her escape the kidnapping attempt. And he is asking questions about what the hell is going on. What uh, are those people that keep on appearing? Why they did jump into the future and wherever else it's going on. So I do love... Uh, the follow the, the book. I'm not going to be telling much more about the story because I don't want to make any kind of a spoiler. But I do love this positioning with Joan, friends, friends herself. Uh, how much do I tell him? How much uh, whatever I do tell him is going to affect the outcome? Is he going to revert to the old Nick? Is he going to be this Nick that I know now? What's going to happen now? I'm, I'm going to be able to read with the monsters that are my friends, that are my family, I'm alone, I'm stranded, I'm with this monster hunter who is now my friend who... What the hell? I mean, there's so many things in this book. The story is amazing, the story is flawless. I love how it all ties up because it does tie up. I love that we are going to be finding new enemies. And I love the ending, which I'm not going to say anything about it. Uh, I love how it makes you think about being, um, I think this book makes you think about being a diaspora chill, child, sorry, um, because the uh, Joan is half Chinese and half Chinese and half American, but she's also half human and half monster, and she's going to be talking uh, about if you define one side, it feels like you are betraying the other one, you cannot be in the middle, you have, like, she feels like she has to pick sides. I love uh, that we have this strong female lead, uh, but she's strong, but she's vulnerable, she suffers, she doubts, she fails, she cries, and I love that we have this human quality in a character that is a monster. I love how she questions uh, the ability monsters have to time travel that costs humans years of life, and I love how she questions everything and how she wants to change things. And how she's put into this impossible position in which she's told time and time again, you have to choose where you are going to ally with the humans or you are going to ally with the monsters. What side are you on in this equation? And I do love also that we have Nick. I think that he is way softer in this book than he was in the first one. And it makes sense because he hasn't gone through the same experiences that he has gone through in the first book. And I love how he tries to understand Joanne. And, and I love how Joanne tells him some things, but other things are like, I'm not telling you that. And I wonder what he, why she doesn't, but I do love that she makes different decisions. And I say the dynamic between them is amazing. And the attraction between Joanne and we're going to be seeing Aaron again. Yay! Uh, it's amazing. And yeah, we're going to be meeting all friends and acquaintances like we met in the first book. And I love uh, to have all these characters again in this book. And yeah, I mean, as you can see, I do love the plot. I do love the story. I love the little nuances about what's right, what's wrong, where do I stand. Um, how can I choose one side of myself when I'm not one side only, I'm a myriad of sides. I'm half a monster, half human, half Asian, half American, half, you know, you cannot spli splice, I don't know how to say that now. You cannot cut me in half, I cannot choose, I, you know, I feel... Yeah, I love how Joan feels about life. And I love that we have uh, these characters who uh, aren't afraid to try new things. And they fail and they keep on going. And I love that they are not invulnerable. I love the thought that's present also in this book about what makes a person a monster. And a monster and a monster and a monster a human. I think that I always say that the worst monsters are human. And there's lots of things to unpack on this book. And I have to say, this story is amazing. If you did love the first one, you're going to be loving the second one as much. And you are going to be rotting for our characters. Even you are going to be... I think everything is explained in a way that you can empathize even with the bad characters, so to speak. And I think that this is, for me, being able to have a bad character, which you can understand the reasons and their motives and you 
can hate them as bad characters because that's the idea. They're the anti hero, they're the evil characters. But also, I love when an author is able to give you a glimpse into these characters' past or reasons for doing the things that they are doing, and it all makes sense. You don't have to agree with the character, the character can still be an evil person, an evil you know, figure can still be doing things the wrong way, but you can empathize and understand them. And for me, I think that this proves that you are in front of a writer who is amazing and know, knows how to make you relate with characters in a very intrinsic level, which I love. I'm a character-driven uh, reader, so this book has been a marvel for me. And now I'm shutting up, because if not, I'm going to keep talking about this book like forever. And I want you to go grab a copy, because you are going to love this one. So thank you for watching. Bye.